Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 69 of Jen and Millie, where a Gen Xer and a millennial share the strength-based perspective through which they view the world. We are your hosts, Allison and Tess. Hi, Hi Allie. Tess, and welcome to Monday. <laughs> welcome to Monday. <laughs> Isn't it? Is it Monday or Tuesday or Friday or Saturday or I don't even know what these days... Yeah, me What either. I do know about them <laughs> is that it's rare for me to not feel a sense of when I wake in the morning, like, oh, yeah, here it is again. Here we go again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I think so much of what we're going to discuss today kind of points to that because mm-hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about the DBT isolation house. Yep. The things that I have learned um, within that is that, yeah, the days kind of feel the same, and I never had that before. Yeah. Same. My adaptability is struggling because it loves for every day to look different and every day looks the same right now, which is really hard. (laughs) And we talked a little bit at the beginning too about which strengths are really helpful and which are really kind of getting in your way. And initially my, my adaptability was very helpful in terms of making the transition. Like life looked so different. So at first it was really exciting and energizing, but now because of the limitations, it's been put in, in a box. Um, and it's a 725 square foot box. Um, that is my apartment <laughs> and that's the, the walls of it and the boundaries of it. And so that's been, my adaptability has been struggling and I try and mix things up a little bit each day. Um, to, so that my adaptability totally doesn't slip into the basement, but because each day looks very similar, uh, it still is struggling quite a bit. I feel like it's forced, like we are using routine to make things change up. That doesn't make sense. We are, <laughs> you, so for example, you're now taking time at lunch to go for a walk, yeah. which is routine but it's creating adaptability and flow into your day so that it isn't so mundane. So I feel like we're using this, all of us are using discipline as a superpower right now in order to find adaptability, find maximizer, find woo, find communication. Um, I had an enlightening conversation on Friday. Um, and I, I miss enlightening conversations. Yeah. I just miss good conversations mm-hmm. that aren't me in front of a screen. And I'm sure you're seeing this, but there's an article that was written back in April that's making the rounds again on social media about why it is that these drain us so much, these Zoom calls, yeah. which anybody feel free. You don't, you can, you can just call me. Like you don't, you don't have to zoom me. You can just call me. Like oh I gosh. used to talk to people on the phone and now nobody talks on the phone. They FaceTime or they Zoom. Um, but the, um, article is about why it is so zapping of our energy and it's because it keeps reminding us of grief Hmm. it's every time I see your face across the screen I am in recognition that I don't see you in person oh my gosh yeah that's so sad I never connected that Hmm. and purple is the color that shows up regarding grief and loss and I am seeing purple everywhere there are purple Hmm. flowers that show up on my if you read my personal blog that show up on my run route there are purple flowers that are showing up um, behind me. Those are what the kids got for me. My DBT house is on a purple piece of paper. <laughs> Can I I've got a purple sticky <laughs> wall behind yeah. me. Um, oh, gosh. So I think we are learning so much about grief mm-hmm. and loss. And the yeah. great the great learning of that is it doesn't always look like um, actual death. Yeah. And you and I've talked about this because, um, I think I had, I've had a long year of grief. Um, and I think I almost felt guilty in calling it that, but yet I was recognizing I was in the cycle of grief because I was angry and then I was like bartering and (laughs) and now I'm to a place of acceptance, Mm -hmm. um, in a year's time. And I'm, I still bounce around. I still get really mad, really mad. Um, so, but I didn't want to name divorce as grief. Mm. I mean, I can, but I didn't want to name it that way for me. Yeah. I don't want to name solitude, forced solitude, as grief or loss because it makes me feel um, guilty. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am 
I live in great privilege and it makes me feel guilty Mm -hmm. to refer to my forced isolation and forced social separation as grief, Mm -hmm. but it is all grief. And so the reason these 12 hour zoom days, (laughs) yeah, seriously, (laughs) I'm surprised that I am, am not like looking like job of the hut. I, no, I sit here, I sit around a bouncy ball all day long for 12 hours. Sometimes I don't get a chance to eat. And when I do get a chance to eat, I am shoving cheese at the most rapid rate. Oh my gosh. I think Can people I don't see us because maybe I do I look know. like job of the hut. You do not look like anyway. job of the hut. You look very nice today, Allie. <laughs> I know we can't talk about this on here, but we do need to have a side conversation about the um, the graduation commencement that um, speech oh, that recently yeah, happened. Do. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Side. That's a sidebar. That is the side yeah. conversation. <laughs> side conversation. Okay, but speaking of side conversations that don't happen recording wise, we had a listener Zoom call. It's it's now like a week and a half ago um, because we just haven't had the opportunity to record, but it was the most delightful, like three hours of my life. It just went on and on because people wanted to hang out. It was so wonderful. And as much as, yes, it was with a screen, but it did not feel the same way other Zoom calls have come to feel because these are people I wouldn't have been able to connect with. We wouldn't have connected with even in person altogether. And so the fact that we had this incredible community of people that like came together, people just wanted to continue to hang out. They were like begging us, please stay on. Like, let's hang out more. I just, I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun and oh, so life-giving. And Tess, it was, it was a moment on the calendar that we were looking forward to. Yep. And I am finding in conversations just with people huge. right now, just mm-hmm. this last week, there, it's becoming harder yes. to find opportunities to future cast or moments to look next. forward to. And I think we had that on our calendar and we both mm-hmm. were so looking forward to it. I also have saved this little tidbit until now. Um, so on Mother's Day, my kids... Uh, we do as a family tradition on your birthday, you go around and everybody says, you know, one, two, three things that they love about that person. Mm -hmm. So on mother's day, my kids did, you know, a couple of things that they love about mom as we had our, um, Laszlo's, um, yeah. Mother's day lunch in my car. Um, (laughs) they, and Shanna, I mean, she just knocked Mm -hmm. it out of the park. Shanna's not even my child. And she, (laughs) she said, I so admire that you walk through everything. You bring love to everything. You bring love to your work. You bring love to your relationships. You bring love to your friends. She said, mm-hmm. you just bring love with you. Amen. And I was like, mm-hmm. of course, Sean with high competition was like, are you kidding me? Like, I want to so, win this. You know? <laughs> yeah. But Lauren said, I sat in on the Jen and Millie Zoom call. And she said, Jen and Millie is where mom is at her best. She said, Jen and Millie is where mom brings like people connections and people together yeah. and they get to know one another and they can hear their own voice. She said, being part of that Jen and Millie zoom call, she said, reminded me of what I admire most about mom. And it's when she is in her element at work, she shines. Yep. And Great. Lauren said, and that's where she's in her element at work. And that was probably, I mean, you know what it's like to get feedback from Lauren. It's a rare gem. Yeah, it is. That's like <laughs> that maximizer is like critique, critique, critique. Here's how you can improve. Here's how you can do better. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> we love you, Lauren. <laughs> and to hear, to watch her, mm-hmm. she knows all of those voices. Yeah. And she loves those voices. Mm. And she met a new voice. You know, she... Yeah. She was, she said, mom, like, these are amazing people yeah. who are doing amazing things. Yes. Yeah. So I agree. It, mm. the okay. ripple effect of this mm. test is, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. so meaningful to me. And I want to thank mm-hmm. you. You are so good about, you make this a routine for us. Hmm. You make, you make a look forward to moment on my calendar. You prioritize time for this. I get so bogged down with everything else that I, I'm not as good at prioritizing this. And it's one of those things that when I see it on the calendar, I look forward to it. And then when we get here, I'm just so grateful for the time. Same. So thank you for that. That's good. 
That's good. I think both of us appreciate meaningful conversation. And so I do look forward to this time even more now because I feel like I'm lacking that a little bit. But I do want to just give a shout out to everyone who joined us or wanted to join us. Um, Everyone who listens. Gosh, I just echo what you said, that we are surrounded in this community of Jen and Millie and of strengths and of teammates by people who do absolutely incredible things. And I was blown away. Like, I couldn't believe that people wanted to spend that much time with us <laughs> and um, and they wanted to answer dumb questions about our podcast and do a trivia game and um, that they had great meaningful suggestions about things we can discuss or ways we can gear the podcast moving forward. Like I feel so, so honored um, that people wanted to spend the time with us um, and give us feedback and have great conversation with us. Like I felt so blessed to see people's faces pop up on the screen. And I just totally echo that, that I'm so grateful. So we want to thank everybody who tuned in, um, everybody who came on. We'll probably try and, and schedule another one in the future because it seemed like people enjoyed it and it was fun. We're like an open house call. People popped on and hopped yeah. off and um, it was just a really great time. And I am, I'm still really surprised that people listen to us. I know. Ditto. Ditto, my friend. I really am. I'm really surprised that people listen to us. But as we were putting together the awesome game that you created, and I was looking back and listening back, mm-hmm. our conversations are just gold to me. I mean, I got emotional. Mm-hmm. I really did looking back because, you know, first of all, the evolution of our hair, you know, that's pretty funny, but how we came you know, from, it was just an idea. Mm -hmm. It was just an idea. Yeah. And it has evolved into something that from what we hear has ripple effects for other people to use in their own life. I mean, that's what we're about. Yep. That's, that's what you and I are about. That's our why. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think even just to listen back, we've covered such great topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And it's just been, as I always tell people, it's like you and I having a conversation and we tape it and I can't believe anybody really wants to listen to it. But I think it's also because we're real. We're not scripted. Mm -mm. You can listen back and hear where we were struggling with sound. You can see one of the videos. If you go way back to our YouTube channel, you can see one of the videos where we had to start recording in another room. (laughs) We recorded that three times. I remember that episode. (laughs) So I think, oh my you know, wow, Tess, yeah. this has been mm-hmm. a growing learning space. Also, my takeaway, you know, when we you asked me what was my favorite episode, mm-hmm. there were so many. Yeah. But the one that really defined it for me is you and these conversations make me stretch. And the conversation when I when I struggled, um, <laughs> and really struggled to get my words out, you were right there with me. Mm-hmm encouraging me to stretch and I'm hoping that every single human has someone in their life who helps them stretch without judgment without you know an assumption of and here's the end goal you better get there Mm -hmm. you know with no expectation but a really solid belief that you can stretch Mm -hmm. because that's essentially what all these conversations do for me and so Gosh. I'll always be grateful for that. Making me tear up. Jeez Louise. And that's hard to do. <laughs> One of the trivia questions was, who cries more on Jen and Millie? Who has cried more? <laughs> I was surprised if you just few people guessed me. So most people guessed you though. It was a pretty easy one. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. But we did future cast to this topic that we wanted to, um, to talk about and shoot, I did make a note originally. We, we talked about this on a previous episode and I, when we tried to record this last week and then had to reschedule, um, I had pulled up the number of the episodes so people could go back to, but then forgot to do it before this. So I will at some point go and find that throughout the course of the recording. But we um, were tackling um, the DBT house, which is the Dialectic Behavior Therapy House. And this is a tool that 
was um, introduced to me at the Green Hills AEA conference last summer, um, right at the beginning of the school year, um, by Louisa L. Yafuri. And um, she is uh, a, an immigrant classroom consultant out of Denver, um, from what I remember. So she works with um, and consults on classrooms that have really high populations of immigrants, um, ESL and ELL speakers, ensuring that um, those classrooms are well equipped, not only with the tactical, um, practical teaching skills that they need, but also the behavioral skills that they need to, to work with students that have gone through significant traumatic and life altering events. Um, and so this was just such a wonderful house. We, um, we, um, have done it, um, now through the episode, um, we've introduced it to a few different people. It's been featured on our blog, but we decided as we were talking that this would probably be worth adjusting based on quarantine, our DVT quarantine house. So um, we've made a few adjustments, and we'll probably both walk through a little bit of our responses for that. But, um, Allie, do you want to kind of lead us off with what elements of your DVT house you've introduced in light of quarantine? So one of the things that I paid close attention to is um, really what I think is happening for all of us is we're figuring out the difference between um, want and need and what is necessary. Yeah. So really stripping everything away. Um, crisis is the great revealer. Mm. to quote Simon Sinek. Um, so good. I hope I'm saying his name right, because mm-hmm. I tend to not, also a little fun thing, I tend to not say people's names right on here. That's all right. Uh, looking back, I noticed that. <laughs> so Simon said, a crisis is a great revealer recently, and I've held on to that quote. Um, so I revamped my DBT house to a DBT necessity house. Okay. And so what I looked at is what is it that I really have to have? What is, what is the have to have for me in order to feel like I can get up in the morning? Mm-hmm. So the, the first things that I drew were around nature. Of course. And although I am struggling in this small space, I have, and oh my goodness, I have to remember and remember and remember to give total gratitude. This happened by accident. When I started looking at apartments, I said, she said, what are you looking for? I said, I want a sunrise and a sunset view, and I don't want things to stink. And <laughs> I remember when she showed me sweetest, sweetest, sweetest um, leasing agent. She showed me the apartment, and she said, I think I have what you what you need. Uh-huh. And my view looks out onto trees, a cornfield, and the lake. And so I do get to experience sunrise and sunset and nature all around me and the moon and the stars. And of all the things that I have to have, this is it. That's it. Hmm. This is That's it. Good. I have to have those things first. And then I redrew connections up here on my roof. And I think the connections that I'm feeling right now, because I'm thinking like, hey, what expands outside my my walls? Yep. The connections are surprising me. Hmm. How so? so? I got, I got the sweetest note and new crystal um, from my friend at Erin. And it was with this little note that said, be brave. And she said, thank you for bringing together the Golden Girls. Mm. So we've had this group of friends that I think I'm kind of the in-between connector. Mm-hmm. So I travel with Sherry and Katie and I travel with Kate, um, with Kim and Erin. But I brought those two groups together. <laughs> we've known one another our whole lives. But I just kind of brought them all together for these um, happy hour um, online happy hours and those connections, those happy hours, the, the texts that we have, huge group texts that go on and on, those have helped me stay sane. Mm. So that group surprised me. Um, some of the people who have reached out during this time have surprised me. Some new connections have surprised me. How I'm coping remains the same. There's not a lot of shift in that okay. other than, um, you know, now I have a glass of wine with my friends on the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus having it with them in person. But how am I coping stays the same, and it leads me down here to the pathway to exercise, which is out in nature. Yeah, that's good. Then I drew a little internal exercise thing, which I hate. I, I like the gym, but I've got my little bouncy ball, and I have my little weights. And then yoga has become a huge part of my yeah. um, DBT necessity house. Um, the images and the items that bring me joy, the big windows, the big view – and then looking for beauty everywhere, finding beauty everywhere. One of my first purchases for um, 
my new space was a quote about beauty. Mm. Um, I will make things around me beautiful. That will be my life. And Mm. I see that every morning by the coffee pot and it's important to me. Um, I did make a table inspired by you around small business supports. Mm. Um, because Tess more than ever, I've started to think about that. So I got online to order a baby gift and as I would typically do, I would get it from Amazon because I was shipping it somewhere else. And I'm like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And so I went to, um, I think it's called sweet baby S U I T E, um, in Elkhorn and made an order there because I thought, no, I want to do this locally and I can, I can do this locally. I just had this moment of realization Mm -hmm. that I've always had the power to do that, Yep. but I wasn't thinking about it Mm -hmm. as much as now. So that's That's good. Music is on my screens and also all around me. So I'm spending more time watching music online. I have new artists that I'm following and I just joined Bandcamp. What's Bandcamp? Bandcamp? No. It's like social media for music junkies. Okay. Oh, I'm loving it. You can follow artists. You can follow fans who like certain artists. I'm on Spotify all the time. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, so music has been part of my screens. Like if I'm going to watch something on TV, I'd rather watch a Tom Petty concert from 2014 than get into a new show. Yep. So that's a big piece for me. Um, I've also learned so much about boundaries during this time. Yes. And so boundaries are now lining my walls of my house mm-hmm. um, on the sides. They are not a gate. They're they're basically building my structure. Yeah. And then my um, foundation remains a connection to my purpose and my why. And this time has 100% confirmed my values. Mm. So I think That's even so within my um, the basis of my foundation, just that reaffirmation of who I am, what's important to me, authentic mm-hmm. self, and that it's up to me. It's totally up to me. Yeah. And then my um, on my path, I have little... Um, little flowers of the things that have grown. Um, Mm -hmm. So my connection to nature, of course, has grown. My ability to get the kayak into the lake by myself has grown. Um, My belief in myself has grown. Mm -hmm. Um, My strength has grown. My confidence has grown. And then the other thing that's outside, this is my last thing. I am um, doing some coaching with someone, and she... She has this great concept. Do you know how we take our three circles? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, she does sandboxes. So she's got two sandboxes, a work sandbox and a personal sandbox. And at the intersection is where she brings her best self. And she's trying Mm -hmm. to figure out when I'm playing in the sandbox at work, when I'm playing in the sandbox of life, what are those things that could come together? Because Mm -hmm. none of us, I don't think anymore are in a place of, work-life balance we're just in it all yeah we're in all of it Mm -hmm. and so the sandbox metaphor I really like because I'm finding new things that not new but existing things to play yeah and Mm -hmm. some of those things fall into work like this feels like play to me Mm -hmm. um and then some of the things that fall outside of the sandbox Mm -hmm. too so sandbox was a new addition I love that. Oh, alrighty. Um, well, I kept some of the things the same as you kind of mentioned a few things the same on your house. Um, but the foundation on the traditional DBT house are your values. And so I kept that because no matter what, that's going to be the same, um, your values. Um, I still wanted to put as well, like people. And so I actually put them in the same place as my roof, the things that help support me and protect me as well as the way that I'm kind of reaching out. Um, and so a lot of the similar people, um, that have historically been on my house. Um, I also put my boundaries as walls. Um, and so we uh, did the same thing. So, um, knowing that because, work and life have all merged together. Um, I know that for my own sake, I've needed to put boundaries in place. So I've put time for tech um, detoxing, um, yoga, balancing, um, making sure I take and stick to breaks, um, some of the things that I've been doing to create boundaries. Um, I um, 
also put instead of I, I had a library on my original um, DBT house, but in my DBT quarantine house, it's become a library slash home office. Um, and in there, I put and, and we've kind of talked about this: the thing that things that are appearing on my screens or the things that I'm spending my time differently. So I'm journaling a lot more. I've always been a journaler, but I'm spending a little more time there. Um, the TV show I'm watching, of course, is The Office. It seems like on repeat. Um, and then um, one of kind of my new fun moments of joy in quarantine is I subscribed to um, book of the month which is a um like an online book reading club and um you know I love to read I have a ton tons of books that are on my list to read but whenever I purchase my own books I tend to gravitate towards theology spirituality self-help psychology like those kinds of books like practical growth books because that's what we both love um but I wanted to infuse a little bit of um variety into it so um, I decided to do this and they have some of those books as part of this book of the month but they largely um, focus on fiction and so they send me a book every month and then as part of like their package for quarantine it was like cheaper and you could do a few add-on books for free and so I um have finished a couple books from the book of the month already that I've really enjoyed, mostly historical fiction. You can strength spot me there. Um, <laughs> this last one that I um, just finished was really good. It was called The Paris Hours, and it was a, a very new book that came out, and it was about 1927 Paris, and it was one of those stories where, like the movie Love Actually, where there's all these independent stories, and then they like merge together um, all of a sudden at the end, um, and it was really, really good. So my strategic love to pinpoint like where these story is going to overlap based on the clues that I am the breadcrumbs that I'm picking up through the story have you read a history of love yes I have your copy of it that's what that story that's (laughs) yes I feel like it well that honors my connectedness absolutely (laughs) that's awesome oh my gosh um so then I also which I think Um, I kind of added this to our amendments to the DBT house originally, but I put planter boxes on my windows and I put things that I am intentionally doing for my own personal and professional growth during this season. So I think I mentioned on here, but I'm taking an online Yale course um, called the Science of Wellbeing. Um, And that's been really good. I'm going at it a little slower than I originally hoped to do. Um, But it's um, like personal, professional, the science of well-being um, taught um, online through Yale. Um, And that's been a really great um, just course and focus. Um, I just put some like future discernment. I've been writing letters a lot more, which I've always been a letter writer, but I've been doing it more regularly now. Um, And just more time for reflection because I have more time in my days. Um, I put as my path leading away from my house, um, my support locals. Um, so I listed local places, which I've mostly mentioned on here, um, night owl, hearty coffee, um, and very similar to what you had mentioned. Um, anything you buy on Amazon, you can buy directly from the company. Um, and I've always been a big Amazon person because I'm like, oh, I can get it immediately and it's usually a little less expensive, you know, but being more intentional about that. So I've done a couple orders um, from local bookstores instead of buying books from Amazon, which is a little more expensive, but in the end it's, I, it's going directly to, you know, bookstores are my favorite. I love bookstores. I love to walk through them and sit in them. And so why wouldn't I try and directly support bookstores instead of buying through Amazon? Um, so yeah, so some support locals, then, um, my chimney, like you had mentioned, is very similar. The ways I let off steam, things that are different, right? Running journaling have always been on there. Um, my daily walks I put on there, um, because that's something I've really enjoyed, like a stop in the middle of the day to go for a walk. Um, and I realized my adaptability and strategic, I pick a different path every day. Um, which is how I'm trying to honor my adaptability. Because when you mentioned we're all using discipline right now, and I'm like, oh gosh, discipline is my last theme. So if I'm asked to function in that, you're not <laughs> going to get the best of me. Um, and so while I may it's take strategic. a- Yes, well, I may take a daily walk. Um, each day is different. Um, similar streets, similar area, um, but each path, each day is different. Um, and then I've been just been cooking a lot more, which I really enjoy doing that. Um, and I'm thankful I still am connected with a few friends. So I still have an outlet for getting my cooking out. Otherwise it'd be bad if I ate it all. 
Um, and then another thing I added to my isolation house was um, on our previous isolation house we had our garages where you could put like your hobbies so where people like, people keep their bikes and their golf clubs and things like that and so I changed mine I still put a garage on there um, but I was thinking about the people who are doing like these drive-by birthday parties like they have these banners on the garages or like graduation like people are using their garages to send messages of celebration and so I was thinking about what are the messages that I'm leaning on right now um, in order mm -hmm. to help me get through this and I'm leaning on my context and connectedness strengths with really the message that I wrote on my garage that says we're still here so my context can look back through human history my connectedness can see the patterns and connections to know that, yes, we've never quite experienced something like COVID-19, but we've experienced lots of other adversities as the human race, and we're still here. And that's like, I am able to live in the utmost sense of hope more than probably a lot of people right now, which is odd to equate connectedness to hope um, or context to hope, because oftentimes people talk about, sorry, context to hope. I said that incorrectly, your face, um, <laughs> because oftentimes the barrier label of context is you're stuck in the past, which is the opposite of hope. Hope is future casting. Um, but my context right now is giving me hope um, because I'm able to look back at our history as a world, as a human race, as a society and say, we have overcome really hard things and we're still here. We will overcome this. We'll take hits. We'll be wounded. Um, we'll never be the same because of it, but we'll get through it. Um, and that's kind of the message that I'm sticking on my garage that I am holding myself to in order to get through this time. So that's kind of how I, I structure also, my house. Like, I'd like to strength spot your context in the sense of there is probably nothing more exciting to someone with high context than to be in a time of history <laughs> yep. when you know history is being made um that has to feel exciting in a way even mm -hmm. if it's difficult yeah because you know that this will be mm -hmm. something that will be talked about yeah for many generations to come I mean it's such a shape shifter mm -hmm. for what future life looks like mm -hmm. it already has started mm -hmm. to do that so I think your context get some excitement yeah in being a part of something of yeah so big in history yeah it's a time marker in our in our timeline of humanity for sure and i would say you know as just to rebuttal as i know you're someone without super high context i'm 32 i think for you <laughs> and mm -hmm. um but i would say all moments are history making moments so to think about this as a revolutionary historical moment yes it is but every single day every moment every election every you know everything that passes is a historical marker to me as someone with high context so I'm like okay this is just the next one that I get to acknowledge but it is a little bit more universal in nature so yes there's a little bit more excitement but I would say someone with high context I think of every day as a historical marker um, it doesn't need to be something this big because that's just how my brain functions like I'll be able to look back on this time no matter what it looks like virus or not and be able to acknowledge that it was a part of history so, and I think my connectedness allows for that. I mean, that's why I blog. Yeah. That's why I get up every morning and I write the initial thoughts that come out of my mind. And they've yep. been kind of amazing. Also, my dreams have been really intense, <laughs> which is a whole nother Jen and Millie. Um, but I think my connectedness, connectedness always believes that this is part of my personal history and growth. Mm -hmm. I love to be able to look back and say, oh, wow, okay. You were growing through that season. You were learning through that season. I think where I feel like context feels like this is textbook mm -hmm. worthy. Yeah, this is going to be put in a textbook. Yep. <laughs> you know, this is talking about Spanish flu kind of stuff. Whereas, uh -huh. you know, like the, the evolution of Allison's timeline will probably, it may make a book. I hope it does someday. It will make um, but it won't, it won't make a um, world renowned um, mm, You never textbook. know. You never know. So the thing that I want to point out that I so appreciate about your walks, and we talked about this when we had we had more of a 45-minute green room versus a Jenna Miller recording. <laughs> Last week, yeah. <laughs> you're, on, you're honoring your senses. Mm -hmm. And that's probably something I should put on my DBT house somewhere, is that I'm becoming more aware of my senses mm -hmm. and what I need to feel and experience both, um, you know, textual and in sight and in sound. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that I, there'll be some things I, I don't want to go back to. 
Mm-hmm. And the, the chaos sound, I don't want to go mm-hmm. back to that. I have walked through recognition now that I spent probably the last seven years wrapped up in a lot of chaos. Yeah. And the peacefulness that I feel and the silence, I really I like that. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I think we could, could all get more connected to our senses. This is forced that we, we know the smell of what it's like to cre- create our own food because we're not rushing from one place to the next mm-hmm. and we actually get to experience and be in it. Yeah. And then the other thing that I love that this represents the DBT house in the drawing is what I alluded to that I um, heard Liz Gilbert make reference to, which is creating art traps mm-hmm. in your house so that you can continue to stimulate your brain and your creativity, even in times of isolation, um, you're creating art traps. So I love having cardstock just around. I love having um, colored pencils next to my, my journal, but creating art traps. I am not an artist, but I am always creating. And when it feels like it always feels like art to me if it feels like I'm creating something because I want to, not because I'm forced into it. That's good. If I'm mm-hmm. forced into creating something, which typically ties to technology, I have resistance. Mm-hmm. So the reason I think that I look forward to this time as much is it allows me to be creative in conversation mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel forced. Um, it feels quite natural. Um, and so much I think of what we have to do right now necessity whether that be for you know whatever role that you have when those things feel forced you really are feeling the pressure of that now yeah yeah for sure because hmm. our senses are in it 100 mm-hmm. percent yeah hmm. that's good these are lovely yes that was good. well done I think... as always um yours yeah. oh. um I think the interesting additions that I would encourage people in is, is both of us had added boundaries. Um, so what kind of boundaries are you putting in place? Both of us had, how are you supporting local? Um, we talked a little bit in our attempted recording last week that just turned into a long green room conversation. Um, I'm surprised that honestly hasn't happened more with us that we just started talking and then totally got derailed and didn't start recording. And I'm surprised. I think that's the first time that's really happened where we didn't just start recording. Um, you are recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I am Allie, but usually I try and get us going and get us actually recording. But, um, that you time we did it and say, Oh crap. If oh, you're not. Cr- oh crap. No. Um, but, um, we talked about like what's on your screens. Um, I think one of the, the really neat things that first came out of quarantine, a quote that I saw that went around quite a bit was, um, let's remember that during this hard time, we didn't turn to, um, our leaders, our politicians, our sports people, we turned to artists. Um, we turned to books and to media and to TV and to poetry. Um, and it's just such a good reminder of the need for beauty in our world, the need for art. Um, and we've talked a little bit about that the last couple episodes. But what are the the points of media or art or beauty that you're leaning on? Uh, my, my piece of beauty is the office that I'm leaning on. <laughs> That's what it, you know. But what are, what are those points of media that you're leaning on? Um, how are you helping process... Um, you know, where are there new ways you're letting off steam, different ways, um, ways that you're not relying on as readily, um, different ways that you're coping. So I think all of those things that we kind of talked about, I love that we didn't really talk about what we were going to add differently. We did a, li- a little bit, but not in the same way um, that we did prior to we did the exact same things on the original rendition of the DBT house, but we just kind of said, how would we create our isolation um, DBT house and kind of went with that individually, but came up with similar things. And I'm finding the word isolation is even hard for me because solitude I like a lot. And I Mm -hmm. think, I think I would choose this for myself in Mm. many ways going forward. Yeah. I would choose more time to be quiet and in my senses and think and read and write and be in music. Um, Which I love that people are pondering what what will you take with you from this? What what do you you know? We can't say return to normal as I keep saying, but what yeah. what do we move forward with that we want to take with us? Yeah. 
And there are things that I will be very much more boundaried about so that I can honor solitude. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I've never been here. Okay. I also think we need to pause and celebrate and acknowledge the fact that a year ago you were incredibly nervous about living and doing life on your own because you never had. So the fact that now at this juncture that you would willingly choose a more recluse life, right? A more, um, a more, a life more centered on solitude. It just like makes me flutter with excitement because gosh, how, how much growth can we acknowledge in that just over the last year? Like you've walked through really hard things, but the fact that you were so nervous and anxious about having to do life on your own, but now coming to a place Mm -hmm. of loving it and appreciating it and desiring that is such a huge thing to celebrate. And I love seeing it. (laughs) And to look back on my birthday, I chose, you know, five days of solitude Mm -hmm. on purpose, not knowing that, you know, a couple months later, I was going to be put in that situation. Um, you know, I've never celebrated a birthday by choosing to be quiet and still, Mm -hmm. you know, woo communication. It is one big party, you know, usually Mm -hmm. a three day party. Um, I miss parties. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I miss parties a lot, but I think I have so much gratitude for what has brought me here. So much gratitude that I had a year to prepare myself for what this would be like. And that year was really, really hard, but to look at it and think, okay, the timing of all of this was necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, Brandi Carlisle, I love her. She's such a gifted artist, but she has a song. Um, and one of the lyrics is, um, by the way, I forgive you. After all, maybe I should thank you for giving me what I found because with you not around, I've been doing just fine. Mm -hmm. And that has really spoken to me. Um, By the way, I didn't have to look those up. Yeah, that was directly like, oh my gosh, that input. Oh my gosh. I was just like, wow, really? Okay. (laughs) I love lyrics. I love lyrics. Um, Which is so wonderful. But I think that has really helped me to Mm -hmm. arrive at this place and be really excited about what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. Not because I know, but because last year I didn't think I could get through. Yeah. And I don't think I just got through. I think I, I think I was thriving and have been thriving and am thriving. Mm -hmm. So it's a good, good thing. And um, as my friend, Jeremy, who, you know, has apparently a name that, according to a commencement speech, isn't a great one, but he, he is he is Jeremy to me. Um, he's also a big Pearl Jam fan, so that helps. But um, <laughs> Jeremy has said many times to me, don't stress, this is exciting. Mm-hmm. And I love that. he also is taking that class that you're taking. Yeah. And just recently did his drinks. Oh, I believe as a result, I can talk about this because he doesn't listen as <laughs> I believe because of that class, as a result, he yeah. has finally taken it. I sent him a code gazillion Forever years ago. ago. Oh my gosh. And well, the whole class like is all what we, all, all what we talk about. It is the first lesson is acknowledging your strengths and talents because you have a higher sense of well-being when you're functioning in your strengths. And this, there's no association with Gallup. There's no, like it's, they, they don't have you take Gallup strengths, have you take a different assessment, but it's all the philosophy that we function under. And it's just mind blowing that this is a course at Yale taught by this professor in positive psychology that, I mean, it all ties back to the same things we're talking about. And I think it's so validating for the message that we try and share to people, that it really is life-altering when you choose yes. to intentionally apply these philosophies to your life. Yeah. So um, when I was chatting with him, I sent him the video that Gallup took of yeah. Lauren and Sean and I, and I hadn't looked at it in a while because it's hard for me, but it's very unscripted. Um, but the very beginning, 
I basically say that, Mm -hmm. that how strengths has been life changing for me because it not only helped illuminate what my natural best was, but I immediately wanted to know the best of others Mm -hmm. and it has driven my purpose. Um, we had a staff meeting where a a positive psychology, you know, Ted talk was, um, the dialogue. And I, I felt like I was sitting on my hands because I wanted to say, this is what we do. Um, because this is what we do with strength. Yep. There, it, it's not just a, a warm fuzzy, and that's where you and I work so well together, particularly when we present together. This isn't just the warm fuzzy, my heart is full. Mm-hmm. Thank you for people naming my catchphrase. That is <laughs> yes. my catchphrase. And yep. it wasn't until that Jane and Millie that I was like, that's my catchphrase. My catchphrase is my heart is full. <laughs> so it's not just about my heart is full. Mm-hmm. You'll come in with the accurate and walking in integrity data that shows Mm -hmm. this matters. Mm -hmm. It it has an overall effect on your quality of life. Yes, which is profound. And it doesn't take a ton of effort or energy. It simply is choosing. Nope. Yep. You don't have to pay for it. I mean, you, you just have to know and understand your strengths and start to view the world, understanding that everyone else brings a different lens mm-hmm. and that can change your life. I yep. mean, preach. Oh man. Yes. <laughs> oh so my gosh. I'm very lucky to have that. a platform like this yeah. where we get to talk about that and that other people listen. Mm-hmm. And for me, um, knowing that even in the slightest way, it may help to create other ripples. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, that's where I will always, always come back to as um, my purpose and my why, my icky guy, my reason for being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I love that. Okay, well, we went over our DBT houses and while they weren't as explicit or prescriptive as the last time we did um, them, they were a little bit of an adaptation from that. So I did want to recall us all as listeners if you don't remember the dbt house maybe you were not strengths day or you um, just recently started listening um, the episode is week 49 which we really went over it um the dbt house in detail for the first time so i would encourage you if you want a refresher on the basics of the house to go back and listen to week 49, um, published on August 29th of 2019. Um, listen back to that so you can get a little bit of a framework um, of uh, of what this looks like before making some adaptations or adjustments um, to create your DBT isolation slash quarantine, however you want to title it, house. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to call too. back there. Um, solitude house, however you want to name um, your adaptations based on COVID-19. So, um, well, with that, we would love to see what sort of other things that you think of when you make or create um, or go back to your DBT house to make adaptations to it um, based on the current circumstances we're in. Um, Allie and I are very like-minded in some respects, so we came up with very similar adaptations, but let us know if there's something different or unique that you think you could add or adjust um, based on Um, the virus, um, how you would make changes to your um, house based on that. I just think about um, my kid's bonus mom, Abby, would have four teenagers in her house. Mm -hmm. Our friend Sarah would have six kids in her house. Who's in your house? We're we're speaking from a place of solitude Mm -hmm. um, and because we live on our own. So I'm really anxious to see how people take their their, um, quarantine um, solitude house and what it looks like when there are others in it. There are all these other Um, people. Yes. That'd be great. I'm visiting my kids quarantine isolation spaces. I should probably draw that here because Lauren has her new space and Sean just moved into new space and like the quintessential bachelor pad with a dartboard and Christmas lights. Um, So, you know, just even I go and visit those other quarantine houses, but I don't have my own children living Mm -hmm. in my home. So I would love to see other people's houses where there are, you know, there's homeschooling happening now that didn't happen before. And Mm -hmm. multiple people working from home at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to see 
some additional. Yep. So make your adjustments and then send us a picture because we would love, love, love to see um, what your house looks like in the midst of this. So that's really our big activation um, for this point in time. Anything else we want to ask listeners? Um, I know you had, you know how to run the fancy Instagram better than I do, but I was thinking as people submit them, can you share them on our story? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you'd be up for it, we'd love to share, um, yeah, to share your house with other people so you can take a look at it if you're up for it. Um, we will do the same with ours and be vulnerable and share ours in our, um, actual posting for the episode. Um, but if you share yours, we'd love to give you a shout out on our Instagram page, um, and share your house there if you'd be up for it. Um, we know that sometimes these can be a bit personal. So if you want to share them just with us and not share them on social media, let us know. We'd still love to see them. Um, even if you don't want us to share them on Instagram, but we would love to be able to share those with other people. And because frankly, now I think we're all one big happy family because of our Zoom call that um, I'm sure the people that you met on our listener call would love to hear and see um, and stand witness to what your house looks like in isolation or uh, solitude or quarantine, however you want to name it. <laughs> all of the names for it. Alrighty. Well, thank you everybody for tuning into episode 69 of Jen and Millie. If you enjoyed today's conversation, consider sharing this episode with a friend. To interact with us and share your responses to the questions and action item we post in this episode, follow us on Instagram at Jen and Millie. That's at G-E-N-N-A-N-D-M-I-L-L-I-E. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are exclusively that of Allison Horn and Tess Darman and may not reflect the views of Team Meets Mentoring program at large. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.